In the first episode of Launch Title Madness, we used Nintendo Land, took out Daytona from the Sega Saturn and said, Wee -oo! I like to drive fast and turn left sometimes. And PlayStation 2's launch title Tech and Tag romped and stomped Link's little pansy ass as we saw Twilight Princess suffer the upset of the bracket so far, and that's weird to say because it was the first episode as Tech and Tag prevailed. In episode two of Launch Title Madness, we are going to see two party games go head to head with Xbox's Fusion Frenzy versus the Wii U's Nintendo Land. And then we are gonna see Sonic Adventure from the Sega Dreamcast go head to head with the Nintendo Entertainment Systems Excite Bike. Wing ding 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 wing ding 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 ding. It's time to fire up your dirt bikes, folks. Things are gonna get a little muddy. It's time for episode two of Launch Title Madness. Welcome to episode two of Launch Title Madness. It's a new mini series. It's season two of the Madness series. We did Console Madness, and now we're doing Launch Title Madness in the description below. If you never caught Console Madness, you might want to go back and watch that. There's a Check hopeless plug to get you to watch our old episodes. But anyways, uh, round one was a lot of fun. I think uh, I think a lot of people will agree with our first decision. I think we might have some folks going. You ruffled my feathers with picking Tech and Tag over Twilight. Well, Prince. that's why I wore this Zelda shirt in honor, in honor yeah. of our fallen veteran Link. Yeah, because he lost in the first round. But I'm sticking with our decision with Tech and Tag. But this episode is not about that. No, 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 no. This episode is about partying and racing and other things. So let's jump into our first contenders. Yeah. We got Nintendo Land on the Wii U versus Xbox's Fusion Frenzy. This is an awesome matchup, and I cannot wait to see how this shakes out. So let's take a look at the contenders. In 2001, when Microsoft entered the console scene and introduced the Xbox, it launched with many different titles. One of those titles was Fusion Frenzy. Fusion Frenzy is a four-player party game featuring 45 different minigames and 22 different game modes. The game received mixed reviews, but it's still played by many today. Can this game cause enough frenzy to advance? Time will tell. Moving on from the preliminary rounds is Nintendo Land. Last round, it took out Daytona USA for the Sega Saturn. If you've been following the series, there's not much more we can say about Nintendo Land other than it is an exceptional multiplayer game, stocked full with 12 mini games and serves as a perfect tech demo for the Wii U. Does Nintendo Land have what it takes to move on to another round in launch title madness? Stay tuned. All right, brother. This is going to be a hard one because we adore these are both two, of these, these games. These are two of our favorite games. Yeah. We love party games. Man. They're both new to me this year. Yeah. Which is weird to say because the Future Frenzy has been out forever. But someone, I think, recommended it in the comment section. Yeah. And we got it. And I was like, oh, my God. I've, I've got way more miles on the tires with the Nintendo Land. I've played that game a lot Nintendo since I've had my ass, Wii U. Yeah. Uh, Fusion Frenzy, though, uh, I, I think when we were playing Halo Land parties back when I was in high school, I think that was, like, the other game he had. And I'd seen it played, but I never played it. Because we were always like, okay, let's play yeah. Halo. He had he had two games. And we were, we were playing Halo. We weren't playing Fusion Frenzy. But recently, we've put a lot of time into both of these games, and it makes it really, really tough. You know, I kind of look at if you get four randos together and you don't know what people like to play, which of these two games do you think people would have the most fun playing? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question. Uh, Nintendo Land is great because it plucks at your nostalgia strings. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I know that, I know yep. that, I know that. And it, bring, and it and it's a unique twist on it. Yeah. Like the Luigi's Mansion game on Nintendo Land. Yep. Oh, so much fun. But then Fusion Frenzy, it's like freaking playing like... Wipeout or like all those like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's so fast paced and simple. There's so many mini games. Yeah, so many. I feel like I get way more competitive playing Fusion Frenzy. Like I yes. really want to. Even when you're fighting the computer, you get. Yeah, and there's so much variety there, and this is really tough because I love Nintendo Land. That's an amazing game. 
But man, if I was like stranded on a desert island and I had like a few people with me and I, there was like one game that I felt like through strategy and getting better at the game and putting in the time, we would have enough to keep us busy and you could actually get better at it. This is a tough one, but I, I, I'm leaning, I'm leaning Fusion Frenzy. It's so tough because when we look at when the when they launched, yeah, I already mentioned in the last episode. Nintendo Land was great because it showed what the Wii U did, mm -hmm. and it's a great. It's a you, you mentioned it's a great demo of the Wii U. Yeah, Fusion Frenzy was a launch title, but it got buried by a bunch of other launch titles True. for the Xbox, and it doesn't really show what the Xbox can do. But it kind of does because it's like, hey, you have four controller slots. Yeah, yeah. You have four. It's a great party game that got buried. This is so tough because Nintendo Land is so badass and it's one of my favorite Wii U games ever. It's a toss up. Uh, but I think I have to agree with you. I think Fusion Frenzy. I, just because, <laughs> dude, there's so many, many games. And what's cool about Fusion Frenzy is. I mean, you can do this on Nintendo Land too, but you can play it by yourself. You can play it two yeah, players, you can yeah. play it to four players, and the computer is hard as balls I, in Fusion Frenzy. It's just... I just think there's <sighs> there's something to be said for Fusion Frenzy is a party game, but there's... You can get really technical with that game and get really good at that game. Yeah, the more you play many Not games. saying you can on Nintendo Land, but I think there's more, like, a hardcore gamer could really dive into Fusion Frenzy and just be a boss. Like, and then you just I, win every I time. really feel that way. And I also think there's something to be said that I really believe in our circle of friends anyway, if we were to bring folks over and do a blind taste test, right? You play this game and then we're going to play this game. I think folks would have more fun playing Fusion Frenzy. I really do. I, I think so too, even though Nintendo Land is so... Yeah, uh, it's tough. It, this, that's why I hate this series. Yeah. Because it's like, man... These games are great. Yeah, we love both of them. We love them so yeah. much, but... I mean, I, I say all the time, Nintendo Land is better than Wii Sports. I love that game. And it just... But... And if you compare man. the visuals, Nintendo Land looks yeah. so much better. But... But... Fusion Frenzy's uh, such a unique animal. I, I, there's, there's not many games out there mm, like it, you know? No, there's not. And I'm so glad I discovered Fusion Frenzy. And playing it with the Duke controller just makes it even better. I know that's a hot take, it means you're, but... It means you're kind of a badass. Yeah, it means you're a badass, and it means you're a Duke. <laughs> I think Fusion Frenzy has to move on. This is this is tough. This is tough. Who do I tell you something? I don't know how I feel about this pick. It's got me in the tough spot. Fusion but. Frenzy advances barely. Yeah. Now let's move on to Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast versus Excite Bike on the NES. Yeah, I think we need to dig a little deeper and take a look at these contenders. Let's go. It probably comes as no surprise that when the Dreamcast launched in 1998, everybody's favorite blue little hedgehog, Sonic, was sniffing around, and he found himself in the first mainline 3D Sonic game, Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure was a unique approach to the franchise and at times almost made the player feel like it was an open world experience. The game received critical acclaim and ended up being the best selling Dreamcast game. It also spawned a fairly exceptional sequel in Sonic Adventure 2. Does Sonic Adventure have what it takes to prevail in this matchup of launch title madness? We'll find out. Excite Bike was released in 1985 with the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game was a critical and commercial success and started the whole Excite series. There are five different tracks you can play and you can either race alone or with computer riders. It also offered a design mode where you can build your own tracks. Can this 35 year old plus game pass the finish line and win the trophy? Or will it fall short? Let's find out. All right, on the old timeline, we couldn't be further apart here, but well, I mean, I guess we could be, yeah. but Excite Bike, you know, on the NES, we're talking 80s, we're talking, you know, late 90s with Sonic Adventure, but I don't think that's unfair because no. there are games in this bracket, you know, that, that from that era that are like all time classics. So I think it's all fair in the game of love and war. And when you're talking launch titles, so let's, um, I kind of want to feel your thoughts on this because I grew up with both these games. I played Excite Bike growing up as a kid, and I was a Dreamcast connoisseur. It was the first console I ever bought with my own freaking money. So uh, I, 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 I've got a lot of input here on this one, but I kind of want to know because these uh, games, Excite Bike, you've probably been playing yeah. for three or four years. Excite Bike's badass, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you know the hatred that I have for <laughs> Mother F and Sonic. This could get interesting. I hate him so much. But, 
when I talk about the Sonic games that I hate, I'm talking about the 2D Sonic games. And Sonic Adventure is the first 3D Sonic game. Oh, 3D? There were some Sonic 3, 3D, yeah, I get it, but isometric full, type stuff. Full, yes, yes. Full, I get it kind of felt like open world, but yeah, it was it, forced. It wanted you to think it was open world. Yes. But it's still linear. But and it, let me tell you this. Sonic Adventure is awesome. I love it, even though I hate Sonic. Like, Sonic Adventure, I feel like that's... It's like when Sonic finally got his groove, his prime. But then, Excite Bike, man. A classic yeah. freaking game on the NES. This is tough. Because I always say Sonic's overrated. I always say I hate him. Hmm. But I think this game has Sonic Adventure has an amazing soundtrack. It does. It does have it, dog shit voice it voiceovers. Looks, uh, oh, dude, Sonic Adventure is and so cheesy. It is such a cheesy. And game. if you didn't like Sonic as like a, a person or a hedgehog, his voice and the way he acts in this game could maybe push you over the edge. Oh yeah. But but the gameplay, and it's ironic to say so this, character selection. but man, I, I think somebody was taking notes at Nintendo because did you not, when when you were playing through that game and you played the fuck out of it, did you not feel like Mario Odyssey oh, wasn't yes. like uh, at least taking notes on the look and the feel of Sonic Adventure? Now, yeah. it's not open world like that. But I think... Dude, it definitely has a vibe of Mario yeah. Odyssey, which is crazy because it came out 20 years yeah. earlier than Mario Odyssey. It's... Dude, Sonic Adventure is great. I know there it has some flaws. It's not the best game. But for a launch title of the Dreamcast, I would... Dude, if I was old enough to know what was going on in 99 when this came out, and I would have been like, I want to mm -hmm. play that. It, it was awesome. But then... If I was old enough to play Excite Bike back when the NES came out, I would have been like, dude, this is incredible. But I'd rather play Mario Bros. But, true. But is that a fair fight? I think, you know, I think Sonic because Adventure it, it is very puzzling to me because I, I'm I'm not as crazy about hating on Sonic as you are, but I do get what you... I understand your points because I'm not a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan of the 2D genre. Yes, the 2D. I get the games, I like the games, I beat the games... I just don't think they're as good as the Mario games, so if I'm going to go back in that era, that's not what I'm playing. But Sonic Adventure is a different animal. It's got amazing soundtrack, which I already mentioned. And for a launch title, it's curious to me that it did not stick and propel the Dreamcast in the way that Mario 64 did and the way Mario Odyssey did for the Switch. I, I just like feel like people, I don't know what was going on. I think they'd lost so much faith in Sega, but it... Sonic Adventure cannot be credited, I don't think, for the downfall of the Sega Dreamcast or the failure to no, launch. No, because Sonic Adventure is best. And you bring up Mario 64, it's crazy because they're from two different generations. Yeah. But I would rather play Sonic Adventure than Mario 64, even yeah. though I love Mario... Like, it just... And Mario 64 is the launch title, which we'll talk about later in the episode, <laughs> later in the series. But yeah. Sonic Adventure, I think, hands down... Has to win. Yeah, has to beat Excite Bite. Even though Excite Bite, I love Excite Bite. Most people, you had four to five NES games growing up. One of them was Excite Yep, and you know, you're, spe you're speaking my language because that's how my situation was. And Excite Bike, my whole life, I'm really good at that game, but I always played that game as like a 15 to 20 minute, 30 minute romp and stomp, get in, get out. I and never then you moved on to another game. I never like would sit down like Gradius when I was growing up. Ooh. I would play that game for five or six hours straight. Ne never happened with its Excite Bike. And I, I think Sonic Adventure I think, well, I think, is a superior game and superior launch title. I think what you just said, Excite Bike is cool and what yeah. it does, but it gets boring. Yeah. Because it's the same thing yeah. kind of basically over and over. Sonic Adventure. I don't think it ever gets boring. Yeah. I definitely laugh at it a lot because it's very cheesy and yeah. ridiculous. But it's an awesome game. It's an awesome launch title. And that kind of hurts me to say because I've hated Von Sonic yeah, so much. But but beautiful environments. Oh, dude, man. Even like that first it, stage. This might with be the, the best Sonic game ever. With the whale coming through the, the dude, dock. It, and, it and looks man. and plays yeah. amazingly. Yeah. And it's weird because saying it plays amazingly with the one joystick setup. I mean, I, I just, it's interesting. The, the way the camera. How you f like that game. Yeah. I, it, it's just, I didn't like want to lead the horse to the water. I was just like, dude, you need to play this. You need to go through it. You need to beat the game. And then let me know what you think, because I had an opinion about this. And it's weird. All these years later, it still holds up. Your opinion fell right in line with what I was already thinking. Well, it's so badass. Like when the way the camera moves in Sonic mm -hmm. Adventure, when you're going through. 
God, it's such a cool game. It's kind of a cinematic type way, like when you hit the the different uh, boosters oh, and like boom. yeah, yeah. Dude, it's such a badass game. Sonic Adventures is moving on. So Fusion Frenzy is moving on, and so is Sonic Adventure. They will go head to head in the Ooh, next round wow, of the bracket. It's gonna be tough, but that's gonna be a ways down the yes. road because. As we have coming up in the next episode, we have Halo from the OG Xbox. First, Call of Duty 2 on the, on the Xbox 360. Oh my god. And we have Super Mario Bros. from the NES. First, good old pilot wings. Yeah. Oh my god. This episode, this, this miniseries is stressing me out. It is. I think this first round's gonna be mediocre tough. As we move through this, it's oh, gonna be it's, insane. It's already getting yeah. tough. Good thing there's beer yeah, for sure. to help ease the so, pain. So, episode one of the series, we had a pretty lackluster beer. Uh, this is a brewery. I think we've had a couple things from them before. I think this is our first time, to be honest. Really? Okay. Yeah, this is Stillwater Artisanal. This is searching for dot, dot, dot. And on the can art, it says something meaningful. meaningful and it's like yeah. a, they're searching for something and no results found. Yeah. This is an Imperial Stout brewed with Sagan Vest grapes. What is that, right? And aged on oak. Not an oak barrel, it's just aged on oak. Yeah. Comes in at 12%. You're the stout fan. It's a hammer. What do you think? Very unique. I'm really enjoying this brew. I've never had a stout like this, which being a uh, stout fan says a lot. This beer is like a 50-50, I feel like, blend of a stout and a wine. Yeah, which is so this weird. It has a very wine element to it's, it. It's, I think it's the grace coming in. And, and there's not much head on it ever. Very unique. I'm really enjoying this. This beer is really good, but very unique. Um, it's very smooth. It, it does not feel like it's 12%. It is so good. When I took the first sip, I was like, what am I yeah. drinking? Like, I don't taste, like, for being an Imperial Stout, I expected that imperial taste, yeah. you know, like that heavy. This is a, kind of a lighter beer. It's delicious. I think that grape really smooths over the flavors and like, this is like the most unique beer I've had in a long time and one of the best beers I've had in a yeah. long time. Like, this is so good. Uh, well, and it's tough because we've been doing this so long. I mean, shit, dude, at this point, we're what? Damn near 400 episodes in together. So we've, we've and that's, <laughs> That's not just not speaking of the band and being on tour and all the beers we've had together. We've we, if we've done 400 beers as a channel, we've done probably 10,000 together, yes. um, just as buddies. But you know, I'm trying not to fall in love with the fact that I've never tasted something like this. I'm just trying to fall in like with that and give it a real fair, honest review. This is somewhere in the realm of a stout, barley wine, and a wine. It's so unique. Um, as far as a flavor profile goes, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it more, though, because it's a new experience than I am for the amazing the flavor. flavors of the beer. True. There's nothing that's really like, oh, my God, this tastes so good. I have to have it again. I, I think I'm just more a prisoner of the moment right now. So I, 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 if I were to put this on a scale, which we don't really do in our beer reviews, Probably say like an eight to an eight and a half out of ten. He says like I'm that. I'm enjoying it. He says that, but like every three episodes he breaks. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. So because uh, we just don't want to put a graphic in. But, it's yeah. You mentioned barley wines, which is a good description. But yeah. I'm not a fan of barley wines at all. Like barley wines, not a huge fan of. But because well, they give you the shits, probably. Well, no, I just mean like taste wise. Oh, but, you like having the shits? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I eat, I eat slim jims every day. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. Yeah. But this is way better than a barley wine. Like no, for is, sure. Yeah. This is so. Yeah, I'm just could be a prisoner of moment, but this I I'm very much enjoying this. Yeah, I it, it's good, it's good. I wouldn't put it in an upper echelon best top of the shelf beer I've ever had, but it's 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 damn good, and it's a hell of a lot better than the beer we had in episode one of this series. Yes, and I do like that they're freaking mixing grapes with imperial stouts yeah. and putting it over oaks. Yeah, I love that oaks, <laughs> oaks and folks and all that other good stuff. All right, guys. This has been episode two of Launch Title Madness. We're having a really good time with this. I cannot wait to see how this series plays out. Just a reminder, you guys picked the game. So if yes. anybody's watching and they're like, why is that game in there? Well, I don't know. You guys picked it. Yes. You voted on it. We're just kind of taking the ball and taking it to the freaking hoop and Bam. slamming it down. I used to be able to dunk a volleyball in high school. Dunk a volleyball. Not a basketball ball. So, is that impressive? I mean, are you I, bragging? Kind of. I think like when you're my age, you get into like that mid thirties. That's like kind of kind of kind of sounds cool. So when you get old, you start reaching for things that weren't very cool, and then you're like, but oh, that th was cool. they were kind of cool, and you can't do it anymore. So dunk a volleyball. Yeah, there you go. And uh, 
Yeah, I don't know why we went down I that think it'd road. Be impressive if you could dunk a basketball. Yeah, I know. I so I would agree. But uh, anyways, episode two is in the bag. It is time to put a bow on this thing because I can just tell we're just gonna keep going on tangents. <laughs> we appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel, and thanks for hanging out through episode two. And we hope to see you in episode three of launch title madness. In the first episode of Launch Title Madness, we used Nintendo Land, took out Daytona from the Sega Saturn and said, Wee you! I like to drive fast and turn left sometimes. And Tekken... Dude, I almost lost it. When you did the Wii you, because it, it, it fits so good. And PlayStation 2's launch title, Tekken Tag, stomp, romped and stomped, Little <laughs> fucking badass. Give this a shot. Hmm. Okay. Whoa, that's very unique. Yep. What in the world is this? <laughs> wow. This is a dangerous beer. There's like a wine element to that. Because it's brewed the grapes. Yeah.